Mist tells us the Pomo Indian name for the river because of its twisting nature was Shabake, or the snake. A 1940 quote from Charlie Bean, who had worked at the big mill, was an eyewitness to his statement. The redwoods were so dense in Big Bottom that the sun did not penetrate, nor could a person walk through the dense growth. And that tells us why the Pomos call the present site of Gurnville Sheole, the shadow or shadow, shady place. What it may have looked like then, one can only imagine. Armstrong Woods State Park was spared the demands of the lumbering operations and gives us something of a feeling of what the nature of the land might have been in the 1800s. Registered as lumberman in Guerneville. Robert Barton Lunsford was very active in buying and selling property in Guerneville town and vicinity through the 1870s and 80s. He also operated lumber and shingle mills, shingle mills at several places with several partners. Lunsford cut the tim timber that stood on the town site proper. Richard Lewis and a man named Eli worked with him. In fact, Leo Lewis was the great-grandfather of James K. Neely. From the paper, September 7th, September 16th, uh, uh, John Schubert wrote in his uh, Stumptown Stories that S.H. Torrance in the spring of 1856 journeyed south until fall, and he found his permanent location directly across the Russian River from downtown Skernville. In 1860, he had saved sufficient funds to buy machinery from San Francisco to put up a sawmill. It was the first in the Guerneville area. It was a small, water-powered thing located upstream 400 yards from today's Guerneville Bridge on the left bank. He ran this fledging industry for about four or five years and then sold a portion of it to the partners of Gern, Bagley, Heald, and Willits. It became a part of the longest-running mill in the area for 37 years. His civic-mindedness was no small thing. He built the town's first schoolhouse and paid the first three months' expenses out of his own pocket. These pictures are from the John Schubert photo collection. John Washington Bagley, fondly called Grandpa. He joined with Heald, Willits, and Gurn to buy the Torrance Mill and served as his sawyer, sawing the first board with the little steam-driven saw as he did the last board 35 years later. He was the community bone setter, tooth puller, and first authority as well as undertaker, first aid authority as well as an undertaker, sexton, and tax collector. He served 13 years as a school trustee, and he qualified himself as a civil engineer, and this lo his local land surveys were never questioned. He also could charm warts, as uh, off of some of the children, as they would tell you. The Sonoma County Library photo photographic collection are available for copying. There will be a number given with each picture should you wish to order that copy. Those without numbers have not yet been cataloged or are from private collections. Number 5917. This is an 1873 portrait of George Emil Gern and his wife Elizabeth. George Gern was born in Neufeldel, Switzerland in 1841, and with his partners Heal Bagley Willits in 1865, they installed the first sawmill in the Big Bottom. Gern died in 1921 and is interred in Santa Rosa. Number 15525. This is the old ford prior to any bridges. The building of the first permanent bridge was in 1882, and this temporary wooden summer bridge provided provided the old Ford. 1479. Grandpa Bagley, seeing as how many folks were living in the area in 1869, dropped out of his sawmill partnership and built this store and petitioned for a post office. For obvious reasons, the town had been called Stumptown, and there might have been a good-natured debate over the name change. One reference source states that George Gurn himself said the town should be named Lunsford, but Bagley, out of respect for his old partner, submitted Gurnville, which became the official name, and J.W. Bagley, the first postmaster in 1870. This was not only a store and post office, but a city hall, 
as Bagley collected the taxes there. Upstairs was the meeting hall, dance hall, and also a funeral parlor. It's the 1996 site of Food for Human store. 6264 in 1873. This is the first school built by Mr. Torrance, who paid the teacher's salary the first year at $52 a month. The school stayed open five months a year. It's the 1996 site of the Veteran Memorial Building. Number 7776. In 1873, we're looking southwest. The White House with the chimney at left is the Torrance House, the oldest house in existence since 1872. It is today, in 1996, the River Lane Resort, the Cass Residence. At lower right, you can notice the men on the stump to give you some scale as to the size of the trees. In 1874, the population recorded was 205 with 62 women. 5971, 1873. Looking east, up First Street, Old Main Street. The second, the two-story building directly behind the stump is the Bagley store with the men on the upstairs porch. The Bagley home is to the right. Would be east looking, looking east down in 1996 on First Street. Prior to the coming of the railroad, this street was known as Front Street and then Main Street. Today, it's 1996, it is First Street. 7775. And now the camera is on Bagley's porch on the second floor. And we're looking east again with the white S.H. Torrance house on the right. 771. In 1875, this is the school with a new addition to the left. 815. In 1875, looking south at the intersection of Mines Trail and Front Street, 1996 Armstrong Woods Road and First Street. The Falls Front building on the left is Rube Williams Saloon. The Falls uh, Front building on the right is the Guerneville Hotel. The steam railroad did not come to Guerneville until 1877. The tracks that are very faintly visible in the bottom were probably used by oxen. The river is in the background. In 1870, High Epperly's Bar was the site of the first homicide. High Epperly was challenged by Washington Finley during a long-running argument, and it was during a hot summer evening of 1876. They met at the dirt streets of what is now the corner of Armstrong Road and First Street. Finley stabbed Epperly twice in the chest before Epperly backed away and shot Finley in the heart with a 25 caliber revolver. This is about the site where the Russian River Realty is today. This is from the Stumptown Stories by John Schubert. The 910. In 1877, the second Gurren sawmill was constructed in 1868 and generally called the Big Mill. It ceased operation in 1901. It was about the area where the 1996 Safeway is was an ad for the Heald and Gurn Mill. They were manufacturers and dealers of redwood and lumber, shingles, moldings, brackets, etc. in Gurnville, California. The old team pictured here was on the summer bridge across the Russian River. Prior to the construction of the railroad in 1877, such teams hauled great quantities of lumber into the Santa Rosa Valley. It was said that during the height of the logging season, all of the departing freight wagons would have stretched out a mile in length. This is Phil Stoffel driving the mules. The largest load hauled by one mule team was 11,000 board feet. 5968. In 1878, this shows the John Folks Hotel on Old Main Street. It's facing south between Church and Armstrong Woods Road, about where West America Bank parking lot is in 1996. 
In 1876, the town held a centennial celebration with an Independence Ball at this hotel and a parade that went for about a half a mile down Main Street and up Mines Road. John Folk's daughter, Mary Etta, married John French, an early mill owner, and their home was built on the hill in the late teen, seven, 1870s. The stage to the left was just called a mud wagon, probably an A. J. P. Clark stage that made the daily round trip from Santa Rosa. Number 7819, Guerneville in 1875, looking west. The two-story dark structure at the left is the schoolhouse and the white building to the right with the chimney is the Torrance residence. Probably the only defined street was Old Main Street. And the mill is the building at just right of mid-center with the puff of smoke coming from the smokestack. At this time, it would be the Heald and Gurn Mill. 5967, 1875. This is the Willits family home. It's on Old Main Street. It was He was one of the four mill partners who owned the forest behind Guerneville, which supplied the trees for the mill. 7889. John W. Bagley with his axe. His wife, Ellen Antoinette Downing Bagley, in the bonnet and bandit skirt, and the son, Frank, at left. They're standing in front of a 100-inch tree. Bagley is credited with by the State Board of Forestry Report of 1886 as the contributor of an amazing statistic. He reported that the trees from one measured acre on Big Bottom produced 1,431,530 board feet of redwood. Lumbering under the crude methods of the time, only one quarter of the tree was utilized. Number 10544. By 1881, this Corbell mill was going strong. The operation was moved to about where Rionito is and operated until 1886. The Corbell brothers led the field in finding uses for the land with advice from the University of California, starting first with feeding cows on the rich pastures and irrigated from the river. 1875, this is the Heald and Gurn mill pond on Five Creek, and you can see the log crashing into the pond from the trailway at the top. The last picture was from the Edith and Andy Kuhn collection. This is number 8721 and shows Nate Manning using a pike pole on that Heald and Gurn mill pond. The original Gurn home is at the far left. W.H. Willis' property claim may be seen in the background, and it was these woods, the mammoth logs, that brought the mill in 1877 to near records at 35,000 board fee. Number 1576, and here comes the train. Finally, agreements were made, and on February 24, 1877, the first train came chugging into town. The San Francisco North Pacific Standard Gauge Railroad came north to through Santa Rosa, and at Fulton, the Guerneville branch would be running westward down the Russian River. The original Guerneville station was built in 1877 and was the end of the line for many years before the branch was extended to Camp Vacation and later Casadero. It's at the 1995-96 six, site of the parking lot in center of Main Street, the block bonded by Church Street and Armstrong Woods Road. This is from rails around the Redwoods from Fred Stint. 2984, the March 6, 1879 flood, and we're looking north, west side of Lone Mountain. The working men's cabin floated up from Murphy's Mill a mile north, up to Murphy's Mill a mile north of town. The Corbell Laughlin Road Vineyard in 1996. This is the same flood, 1879, photo number 15528, and we're looking towards Cemetery Hill. Number 15529, in 1879, this is the old Quicksilver mine, the south site of the old town of Mercury. It's about three miles north of Guerneville on Sweetwater Springs Road. 
The mine started in about 1873 and boomed for many years, especially during the war years. It shut down in 1972, but some of the old buildings and tailings may still be seen. 7817, an 1882. This is a tree with 13 people sitting in the cut of the tree, and it gives an example of just how huge they were. Among the giants was one felled on the Drake property in 1873. It was over 3,000 years old. It soared 275 feet skyward, measured 18 feet in diameter, and yielded 78,000 feet of lumber, of which 57,000 was clear of knots. The lumber was set aside to build the first Baptist church in Santa Rosa and became known as the church built from one tree. 5970, in 1882, the Juiced Corner Saloon at Cinnabar and Railroad Avenue. It's the 1996 uh, corner where Armstrong Woods Road and Main Street in the site of a video store. This structure built was burned in the 1889 fire and was success its successor was also burned in 1894. After the 1894 fire, fire it became known as the Louvre, spelled L-O-U-V-R-E, but was always called the Louvre. 7919 Reuben Williams and his family standing in front of his saloon. It was the first saloon in Guerneville. Heald and Guern would not sell lumber to him to build the saloon, so he had to have it hauled in from outside. It's on First Street at the summer crossing is to the left and the river flows behind. It's about where the, there's a pizza parlor in 1996. In 1880, at the other end of the street from Reuben Williams Saloon was the Temperance Hall. Temperance Hall. It was built about 1880 and later moved from this location. It was the south side of First Street, just east of Mill. It was moved to church in First Street, and then a saloon was open on the first floor. The house on the far left is the home of the River Lane Resort, the Cast's home. It is the oldest built building. It was the Torrance House. Number 6084, Wells Fargo and Company Express, run, bar, run by Gerhard Dietz, who took over the post office in 1880. The sign above the post office so says, Watches, Clocks, and Jewelry, Neatly Repaired. It was on First Street between Church and Mill, facing south. Number 7826, and next door to Dietz's is O. Morrison's Cheap Cash Store. This picture was taken July 3rd, 1882. You can note the flags tagged to the post in celebration of the 4th of July. Morrison was the town's notary republic. This building was destroyed by the March 1883 fire. Street is the John Taggart Hotel. This also was destroyed by the same fire. 917, and this is the new Merriam District School. It is in the same location as the old school, and it's the Veteran Memorial Building in 1996. 7874, this is the Bagley children with their playhouses, probably in a, between 1874 and 1880. The, ch the children uh, have rather sophisticated playhouses. 208. Miss Gillian Rogers with the students at Merriam School in 1880. 207, and Professor C.G. Sullivan and his students, the older ones, at Merriam School. Number 7759. In 1883, they were still logging with a combination of horses and bulls to bring the logs down to the flatbeds and then, flat beds and then to the mill. Number 7818, the French Brothers Logging Operation. Hild and Gern had bought their own engine called the Polly Ann, and it was the first known steam engine. At one time, was the, uh, the main street was called Polly Ann. Because the Polly Ann 
had outlived its usefulness. New Year's Eve, 1888, George Gurn decided to really welcome in the new year, and he proceeded to place a number of sticks of dynamite in the tender of the Polly Ann, which was sitting idle on a side track. With cowbells are ringing the ear, 1889 came in with a roaring bang as the old engine blew up, and along with it, every window in Gurnville was broken. New Year's Day found George Gurn quietly paying the cost of the repairs for the windows of the town. 719. The lumber mill at Gurnville had become the Gurn and Murphy Lumber Company, and about 1886 the steam locomotive Polly Ann had outlived its usefulness and was too small to haul some of the logging cars around. So this bully boy was purchased. The engine was an 040 type with a rather large cab. The date is 1886. 547. By 1909, lobbyer operations used this Dolbeer donkey. It was to load the heavy logs onto the flatbed cars after the bulls and horses had dragged the logs from the hills. Number 6321. And when they got finished with loading the logs on the flatbed, they would be brought here to the crew of the big mill in 1890. Say 16. Or they would be taken to French's mill. This was located on Armstrong Woods Road, about a mile north of town. Notice the log loft mountain behind. 6347. Or they could take the Mill logs to the box factory. Number 7922 in 1873 shows the Livrew and Eli sawmill. This was located on Livrew Creek at the bottom of Pool Ridge on the northwest edge of today's Corbell Laughlin Road Vineyard. Number 6341 shows the L. Frank Clark's shingle mill, which was also active in Guerneville in 1885. Number 6228, June 1882, looking east and a bit north. The French house is on the hill. The bell tower of the new school and Main Street road runs toward the camera and ends at the big mill. Five Creek is just this side, and a Russian and a uh, river, tr a railroad trestle, just left of the photo center. And at lower left is a plowed patch about the stumps. Just beyond is Liberu Creek, crossed by a wagon bridge. Somewhere in the center, Marshall Florence's chair factory may be hidden by the tall tree. Going up the hill to the left, the road proceeds to up onto the cemetery, seen up at up at left, and it's still in its 1996 site. Number 5986. We're looking from the opposite side in the opposite direction toward the south and west from the French's house. There is, in the center, you'll just left the center, you'll notice the dark area. That's crowded, uh, the uh, cordwood is all stacked there, ready to be shipped out on the railroad plat cars. The steeple on the right side is the Methodist church. Number 6226 is a closer look of the sa in the same direction towards the southwest, and you, the new school tower can definitely be seen in this picture. 2720. In 1887, we're now down on First Street, Old Main Street, looking west. Ray Clark's Out of the River Mist 
Its probable explanation for the crowd may be that this town of about 600 were gathered to watch the ascension of a balloon. For 6235, in 1888, we are now looking in the opposite direction, easterly. Number 7822. In 1875, we're looking northwest. The railroad track is coming from Main Street to 3rd Street between Armstrong Woods Road and Church Street. The big house in the middle was probably lodging and board, and the sign reads, Fresh Bread Every Day. 918. It's called Pippin's Home and vegetable garden. And the chimney, it is noted, is made from wood, probably log cabin style, fashioned then, and then wood, mud and stone was rammed between the two wooden walls. This is the Sterrett home, down on 3rd Street, where the tracks have come in front of it. 4322. In 1887, the town now has a brass band on Railroad Avenue. It's in front of Napoleon Bonaparte's Turner's and the railroad station. The camera is placed about where King's is in 1996. Midway on the north side of Main Street between Church and Armstrong Woods Road, the camera is. Looking east after the 1894 fire, a fire which started in the kitchen of a home on August 25th raced out of control and fanned by the brisk upriver up river wind soon en enveloped the main section of town in roaring flames. The citizens' bucket brigade was driven back by the intense heat. When the Holocaust was over, practically the whole of Guerneville was destroyed with the loss of two lives. Situated on the edge of town, the lumber mill was spared. 832 is showing the fire destruction from the opposite direction. The camera is about where the Guerneville uh, Veterinarial, Veterans Memorial Building is. Shows the Grand Central Hotel, one of the buildings that did not burn in that fire. New buildings built right after the fire. These buildings join where the Veterans Memorial building is in 1996. It's the Dry Goods Millinery, Maestrom's, Guerneville Boot and Shoes Store, and the Guerneville Meat Market. 5963. By 1899, the Miriam District School has grown, and you'll notice that there is a new addition. 7813 is 1900. We're looking east on Old Main Street towards the mill. The large two-story building on the left was the Temperance Hall, which was later moved down to Church and Main, when it then operated as a saloon. The shadows are from the eucalyptus trees in front of the Guerneville School. The building on the right was an ice cream parlor. After the logging came the removal of the stumps and Charlie Bean, standing at the top, was known as Guerneville's greatest stump remover. It's George Gern standing on the bottom. Around 1890 and 1910, soon after all the large trees and stumps were removed, hops were planted at the south and west flat at the bottom of Lone Mountain. The hop pickers were using the low pole hops. 7821. In 1893, Guerneville had a baseball club. Left to right, top row, Willard Cole, Jim Pels, Charlie Poole, who was the manager, Jeff Smith, and front row, Ben Klink, William Cole, Jack Brown, Will Bagley, and on the ground, Frank Westcott and Steve Klink. On the corner of Cinnabar and Railroad Avenue, which is today Armstrong Woods Road and Main Street, stood the Juiced and Sterrett Railroad Exchange. The tracks you notice to the left. There was also a set of tracks that went up further up Third Street. The vi videos. There is a video store at this location in 1996. 1898. This picture was taken from a hill of a Gernwood Park, looking northeast across the river towards Neely Beach and Neely's Road. The barn is where the James Neely House is in 1996. The mill is at the left and the French home on the hill. 
100. Gernville saw this locomotive pulling a chain of cars come puffing into town. It came to a halt on the main street of town. Accompanied by the sound of escaping steam, throngs of eager vacationers poured from the vestibules of plush-seated chair cars. Laden with suitcases and boxes and beach umbrellas, they wasted no time in reaching their favorite resort or campground to begin a week or a month or possibly a full summer in the woods along the banks of the Russian River. Town, you would take the tracks to Gernwood Park or drive. You can still see the scarred hills of the logging. 6013. By 1907, this is the entrance to Gernwood Park Resort. After the logging, George Gern developed the area as a summer resort. Behind the camera was Gernwood Heights, another logged out era he, area he developed. Second growth redwood in the background is about 25 to 35 years old. 875. In 1895, this two-story interesting summer home set in one tree was at the Hobart Creek Campground. That's today's DeBrava Village. Preachers and pastors would hold group camp meetings in one and two week se sessions. He built a brand new bridge 1892 across the Russian River. It was wooden. Being made of wood was susceptible to fires. Obviously, this car wanted to make it across, but didn't. The horses had to come and pull it out. Number 1802, we're looking southwest from the hill. The large roof at the left is Noel Tunstall Stable. Noel ran the last stage from Gernville, Gernville to Casadero, a round trip uh, every day. The Grand Central Hotel is in the center. That building and seven other structures were burned in a March 12, 1906 fire, just before the earthquake. The Oddfellows building was built in 1889. It was built out of bricks to survive fires, but the fire of 1894 ate out the mortar of the bricks and it collapsed. The river at high water is in the background. This is the same Gurnville scene under a blanket of snow. Herschel Hotel, the Congressional and the Temperance Hall. The large area in the center that was vacant is bounded by Railroad Avenue, Church Street, Third Street, and today's Armstrong Woods Road. It was used for baseball games, Circus would come to town, Chautauqua shows, and obviously the shortcut from one place to another with the paths crossing it. Still panning from the hill, we're going to north. This is down 4th Street, the Methodist Church. Garibaldi's Hotel, which was uh, has where Bucks is today, and where Hetzel's is across the street, and the Manchester House out on the further north. You saw the roof of Noel Tunstall's stable before, and this is the front of his building. This is where Lambert's uh, Chevron Station is in 1996. 718. In 1904, across the street from Tunstall stable, where Lark's Drug Store is today, was the Gurnville Rochdale Company. It was a merchant, general merchandise store. 796 in 1900, we're now looking east down Old Main Street. 64 in 1900, now we're across the street looking west. The school fence is down at the far right mid picture. Runita's Coon Collection, this is the Gurnville Hotel. It's at the site of where the Cinnabar shops and a parking lot is today. It was built in 1894 by Gus Witherspoon. Weatherspoon, and uh, it was burned in a in fire in, in, in 1963. This contraption was known as the coffee grinder because of that huge gear stuck on the front of it. It was used back in the canyons to winch logs off the hillsides with the block and tackle pulling the logs onto the flat cars. 
It spent its entire lifetime on the Russian River branch, hauling logs to the river and local passengers. East at the Corbell Orchard uh, <laughs> Vineyard, uh, the tracks are heading towards Guerneville. You'll notice there are a lot of stumps and quite a few vines, but they have the stumps have not been cleared yet. Zero, zero 006. In 1903, this was the entrance to another summer resort called El Bonita. It was upriver about halfway between Rionito and Guerneville. Number 5980. In 1912, George Gern and his granddaughter Geraldine Pugh sit atop a stump. According to a postcard that dates the waters, the high waters, and the, the, the stump was left from the high waters from the 1879 flood. The stump on a stump is how it's known. And it's, it was at the southwest side of Lonely Mountain. The latter would indicate that the waters had to be at least 13, 14 feet deep to, at this spot to float that stump. This also shows just how much of a stump was left after the tree had been logged. 737, the water wagon to wet down the dusty streets of Guerneville in 1900. The 1906 earthquake. It left Tunstall stable looking like this. Heavy damage caused to the brick building that was Tunstall's livery stable, which is now Lambert Station. Standing in front of the front of the precariously propped up building are Benjamin Miller, town constable and stable partner, with Noel Tunstall. The identities of the other men are un unknown. Number eight, 1804 is the Odd Fellows Building's destruction. This is the front of the building on Old Main Street. 805 is the back of the building facing on Railroad Avenue, today's Main Street. Bricks are all piled neatly to the right of the picture, and these temporary buildings house Stalker's Combination, Dave Hetzel's Cigar Store, Williams Confection, a stationery and news depot and drugstore next to the Louvre. The Louvre is where today's video store is. Elizabeth's Catholic Church. It was built in 1906, and it survived the fire fine. It was located ab just above about where uh, St. Elizabeth is today. 7794, 1908. Floods, fires, earthquakes. The river still beckons. And this is the summer camp at the south end of Johnson's Beach today. Number 6008, just up closer to the trees, Camp on um, Johnson's Beach, Camp Reveille pitched their tents in 1908. 6032, this is Eagle's Nest at today's Rio Nido. 6031, if you weren't enjoying your tent cabin up on the campgrounds, you'd come down to the beach at Eagle's Nest. There's boating and swimming. Number 4599. This is Murphy's Beach where you could also camp and go swimming. If you can see the white stuff on the faces of the swimmers, that was zinc oxide, which was used to prevent sunburn. 524. By 1910, this is Scott's camp, with Japanese paper lanterns, striped tents, and camping under the redwoods on the Russian River in style. Driving in Guerneville in around 1908, you'd be driving over this wooden bridge from Pocket Canyon. March 19th, 1907, the sign says $5 for riding $5 fine for riding or driving on this bridge faster than a walk. 007, after you, when you wanted to go across the river on the bridge, you would now see all these new homes there. This is at Southside. Coming into Guerneville, 
over the bridge, you would turn up Main Street, which is today's First Street, and you'd be seeing these buildings. The Odd Fellows Hall, or the Big Brick Building, was built after the 1894 fire in Chautauqua groups, and one night stand uh, repertory theater would be there for a week, and uh, they would have campaign speeches there also. You see, it's at the same group of buildings, the opposite direction. By August 8, 1908, there's going to be a grand ball at the hall. Bill Nolan is standing in his bartender apron in front of his majestic bar next to the drugstore and then Dave Hetzel's tobacco shop, a grocery store, and then the bank. This is the north, star, the north side of uh, 1996 First Street. The French house can just be seen up the hill. Standing in front of the Louvre bar, Guerneville's Combo. 3486 in 1910's Memorial Day, the celebration is being held at the Guerneville Cemetery at the top of the hill. 2716. This is the O. O. Cobb and Company General Merchandise in 1910. The store was built in 1907. It was a corrugated iron building, and it was about where Guerneville's 5 and 10 stands today. It was destroyed by the 1919 fire. You would have thought that this dam had just been built for these young people to sit and enjoy the river. 6229, the tobacco farm of Dave Hetzel near Guerneville in 1912. Dave Hetzel, with his hat, standing in the middle of his tobacco fields, is upstream of the Guerneville Bridge which can just be seen in the background. The town is to the viewer's right. He grew tobacco for about 30 years and won medals at two World's Fair, which created quite a stir that tobacco of such high quality could be grown in this river area. Here, they are setting the leaves to dry in under the shed. Hetzel felt that drying the leaves on wooden rods instead of metal rods gave them a better flavor. You can definitely see the bridge in the background. 6314, Guerneville Miriam District School, probably March 7, 1910, celebrating Bird and Arbor Day. The school woodshed was at left, and the river bridge is at right. In 1908, members of the state legislature came on a junket to Armstrong Grove. It was when the bill was first introduced to create a state park. Quote from Out of the River Mist. In 1911, a new residence to Guerneville, William S. Smith, more commonly known as English, for he was right, he and his family were right out of Kipling. They built this barn-like structure, strictly in the shape best suited for audience view viewing of motion pictures. It was on the Guerneville end of the bridge upside river. To see what is being shown, the passion play is in the future. The heart of an Indian mother, American fleet in France, and the Indian picture on Wild Wild West is also featured. 6276 shows Pat Damon and his payment wagon selling his wares right outside the theatorium. 6273. The railroad station was moved across the street and up to the northeast corner of Mill and today's Main Street. It's where the community services building that now uh, has is in that particular site. This is about 1913. Waiting for family and friends to arrive was a daily fun thing to do for the people of Guerneville. And what made it even more pleasant was to wait enjoying an ice cream at Blake's just across the street from the station. 799 shows the commercial hotel. Mrs. Sterrett is seated in the chair, and Anna Sterrett, Alt Alta Sterrett Luttrell with the hat is seated on the step next to her. Mid-block 
facing Main Street between Church and Armstrong Woods Road. There used to be an alley running through the block where in 1996 there's a parking lot. The uh, little Al Italia, uh, Italia Hotel to the right became Goree's Tavern. This shows the community church on Old Main Street between Church and Mill Streets. In, 18, in April 26, 1895, incorporation papers were filed to establish the Congregational Church at Guerneville, which, which since has become the Guerneville Community Church and is now out Armstrong Woods Road. It's a private res this building is a private residence today. 7820. By 1913, St. Elizabeth's Catholic Church had increased enough that they built their new building. 5965. In 1913, John T. Kuhn carried on in the hardware business. His father, Robert Wilson Kuhn, from 1884 18 to 1890. They fabricated plows, wagons, and farm instruments in the blacksmith shop on this location. It's probably a 1910 Cadillac Roadster. This is on Armstrong Woods Road between 3rd and 4th Street, a large building housing uh, automobile uh, repair shops is in that today in 1996. On the block, on the corner of the block on Armstrong Woods Road and 4th Street across from the Catholic, uh, St. Elizabeth Catholic Church was the John T. Coombe Home. In about 1919, we are looking east down Old Main Street Going from right to left, first is the Tunstall livery stable, fast becoming a garage. The second you see the first building in the block is a Fred and Charlie Drake Brothers Meat Market. Charlie ran the store and Fred at the slaughterhouse. The ice plant was that they had in their store was the first one in, Glor in, in Guerneville. The slaughterhouse was out at the site of the 1996 site of the Sonoma County Yard. The next to the meat market was Hetzel's Tobacco Store. Then Frank Buchanan's opened an ice cream parlor in about 1918. And then came Lark's Drugs, Warren and Lark's Drugs, and a grocery store, probably Burkhoffer's. In February 1915, this shows the high water we're looking towards the river, and the large big brick building is right, right there, known as the Union Hall, Oddfellows Hall. Number 6360, in 1915, the sign on the wall where Lark's Drug star Store is, and today is Belden and Burkhofer. On East Austin Creek, above Red Slide, the Sonoma Magnesite Company operated until 1916. Before a small railroad was built, the ore was sacked and hauled to Guerneville, hauling the ore wagons by four, six, four to six horse teams over the Morrison and Dutton Gillum grades. It was brutal work. From Guerneville, the Magnesite was then shipped to New York by way of the Panama Canal. And the inside of Burkhofer's store looked like this. Oscar Burkhofer, Sr., is on the left. Thoughts of the European War were in the minds of many people. And on July 22, 1915, this was the Guerneville's Preparedness Day Parade. This number of this uh, picture is number 6244. 1917, looking east down Old Main Street during World War I, the banner across the street has a star for each Guerneville man fighting at the front. There were 28 stars. The post office is where the American flag is about mid of the building. McGurnville's young gentleman standing in front of the majestic bar. This bar was 
mid block of the on main old main street between church and armstrong woods road inside of the majestic bar bill nolan is on the right the chinese gentleman in the center is charlie wong's uncle charlie wong went on to build the building that the uh, sen senior center is now and romney cole is on the left this back bar was moved from this location at the Majestic Bar to the Louvre across the street when Bill Nolan took over that building. 6230, in about 1913, the Guerneville Times building. It carried on the tradition of a Guerneville newspaper started in about 1897 with the Guerneville X-rays and then the Russian River Advertiser, which was bought out about 1910 and then the Guerneville Times. The, grape, the small grapevine-covered peaked roof structure to the left was the, only, was the only result of a campaign by the Improvement Club to have a public plaza, the fountain as it was known. It endured as a place to get a drink of water and stand in the, and rest in the shade. The French house may be seen on the hill, top mid picture. Number 2794, 1918, Annie Downs with her students. Number 7806, in 1915, they're still pulling these huge stumps out. Charlie Bean, famed for his stump pulling knowledge, and Sam Mazzola is at his side. Near where the lumber yard was, it'll be the presence, the site of the uh, new bridge build, uh, that's being built in 1996. This strange building was built by the Western Carbonic Acid Company, and it was called a stack kiln. It was built in 1917. Then an, a stump factory, and there were plenty of stumps around to process old stumps to exact extract the chemicals. Both of them failed, however, as costs exceeded profits. What appears to be a very momentous occasion to gather all the children and dress them in costume happened in about 1912 at the Odd Fellows building. This pumper stationed under the bridge was the extent of the Guerneville Fire Department's equipment. Forest fire of September 1923-24 that raced clear to the coast had the benefit effect of convincing, beneficial effect of convincing the citizens that a legally organized, responsible, tax-funded Guerneville Fire Department be organized, and it was. The Louvre had a garden built next to it. It was known as the Beer Garden. This is the outside with Bill Nolan standing on the left. This is the inside of the beer garden. There's a group of gentlemen with the beer wagon, all the kegs. We are looking east towards today's Russian River Realty. The truck is parked in front of the Louvre. 6351 in 1923, the train time is still, a daily eagerly awaited event. The camera is looking east. 5984, 1923, this is Lou's place, Lou being Lou Gorey. It's a 1996 site of West America Bank. Inside of Lou's place. On the street, mid-block, we see the Guerneville Theater and Sterrett's New Meat Market. Number 576, in 1923, Ben and Nins. The signs say regulation, tin pin, tin pin bowling alley, soft drinks, pool, smokes, the national ice cream, and Ben Westcott also ran the barber shop next door, and Ningadati became a county supervisor. You'll notice at this time, 1923, there are a lot of soda fountains and ice cream parlors in the area. In 1923, this brochure was sent out by Molly Utz for the Big Tree Camp. 
The area was, the camp was held in Westover Park. When the mill was taken over by the uh, Sonoma County Lumber Company, Ben Westover took over as president and was able to plant all of, a lot of trees around uh, this area and, and it became a park-like situation. The site is today's Safeway. Caretaker Venancio Giannacchini giving Molly Utz a ride in the wheelbarrow around the park. Ely's Beach. River from the bridge on the town side was Nidergris Resort. Number 2715. In 1924, cars, trains, and can canoes were not the only way to get into Guerneville. The singular event pictured here was when for five dollars you could take a ride, a bird, get a bird's eye view of the Guerneville area on Hunts Curtis Jenny, JN4D. It was the only open and relatively level field, the area that is Laughlin, uh, that is, uh, was Laughlin Darien and is now the Laughlin Road Corbell Vineyard where 40 years earlier, their world's tallest, most voluminous growth of redwoods had stood in their pristine glory. Before the next Guerneville School was built in the same site, it is in 1996 the Guerneville Memorial Building. The school was being built. There was a junior high established. It's a, it was in the Pills resort dining room where they partitioned off the areas for the different classrooms. It's in today's post office site. 0069. Guerneville's old wooden bridge is no longer. In 1922 this new bridge was built and now nearly 75 years later in 1996 they have started to build a new bridge upstream and this bridge will remain as a pedestrian walkway early 1920s, the homes were taking on a definitely more established look. In 1996, this is known as the Applewood Inn. Around the 1916, an open-air dance hall was open called the Grove. It is in where today's parking lot is in the center of town. There were canoes along the edge of the building and you can see the trees in the background. The place was strung with Japanese lanterns. 1830. In 1933, we are looking west down Main Street, 1996, and the trains are still an important part of the town, but you must also notice how many more automobiles are now in the picture. 068. In 1932, we are looking down Main Street, looking southeast, about from where today 1996's Quick Stop Corner is. This is from a postcard showing Cecil B. DeMille's make, making Brave Heart in about 1925. This was on Neely Beach see that the motion picture companies found this area a long time ago. This shows the manor house and mill location of the famous Lasky Players Company. It was Benson's Tavern. It's at the end of Neely Road in Guerneville. Those 1927 baseball team. From the right, Bun Belden, Bid Green, Rand Sterrett, Frank Gorey, Jack Brown, Bert Laws, Jack Sterrett, Ralph Belden, Glenn Laughlin, Bert Klein, and Frank Monticelli. Wood wasn't the only place one putting on productions. Here we have the Eastern Star in Oddfellows Hall. Boat. It ran from Johnson's Beach up to Rio Nido. Ran, you cha uh, charged you 25 cents for a round trip. Being at Johnson's Beach was really popular. By 
1938, St. Elizabeth's Catholic Church congregation had grown large enough to build a larger church. The hillside here is being dug out prior to the building of the foundation. Charlie Bean here clearing his field, probably were getting ready to plant the corn he was famous for. Church at the Coon House. The foundation of the church is progressing here. Panning upward towards the parish house, which stands there today, you can see how deep the foundation was for this Catholic church. In Sonoma County, a big part of our agriculture in 1943 included sheep branching. In 1943, there were about 136,000 head of sheep, and in 1996, there were only 13,000 left. It would appear the methods of shearing have not changed a great deal. Here, this herd is still wearing their fleece. And having been sheared, they're waiting to grow for next year's crop.
Fred Stint writes for the Western Railroader, the Guerneville branch, about the last day of the last trip of Guerneville's uh, train. On September 26, 1935, the Commission gave the Northwest Pacific permission to abandon the Guerneville branch. The Northwest Pacific then announced the last day of operations would be Thursday, November 14, 1935. The boat connection left San Francisco at 7.45 a.m. The rider made sure he had purchased the last round-trip ticket to Duncan's Mills by waiting a second before the door was closed at the ferry building waiting room. There were a few officials on the three coaches plus a scattering of old-timers who wanted to be on the last trip. Everything was quiet until the train arrived at Guerneville. There they had declared a holiday, and all of the townspeople got aboard with lunches and beer and pop and music. And one old-timer was busy putting a wreath on the engine, and then quickly running back and placing another on the rear of the last car. On the last coach, a banner was hung, the last roundup. The last train puffed its way into Monterio, and other large, another large group boarded. There were no more seats, so they opened the baggage car and one official remarked, if only we had this every day, we could keep the line going. With the exception of some of the old timers and rail fans who were mourning the passing of the line, the crowd was festive, and becoming more so as the train rolled along the river to Duncan's Mills. As soon as the train was turned on the Y at Duncan's Mills, the crew gathered together for pictures and speeches, and lunches were eaten and beer and harder liquor flowed freely. There were more speeches and hand clapping and hand shaking and more pictures. Over in one corner of the depot, several of the old timers talked and wondered what was going to happen to the area. Without a railroad, how could business go on? Where was the future? Then the conductor, H. A. Johnson, who was watching all hands on his watch, called all aboard. It was 1.40 p.m., time to go. In habit, Conductor Johnson looked at the order board, but it had already been taken down. The once busy depot was closed, and he then looked at his rear brake brakeman, G. H. Lamb, and his head brakeman, E. I. Barry. They were ready to go, so he gave the high ball to fireman G. C. Neighbors, who in turn passed the signal to engineer Billy Burns. Billy Burns opened the throttle on locomotive 108, and the last trip was on its way. When the train left Monterio, the town's fire engines were at the depot with their sirens going full blast. At Guerneville, horns and bells were sounding a fond farewell, and as the train pulled out for the last time, tears came to the eyes of many. Engineer Burns didn't help their feelings when he held the whistle cord until he was well out of town. It wasn't long before the train reached the main line at Fulton and rear brakeman Lamb got off the last car, went back, closed the switch to the Guerneville branch. And with that, 60 years of railroading on the Guerneville branch had come to an end.
1936, the railroad tracks were torn out, and the automobile has taken over today's Main Street. We are looking west. The WPA and CCC workers built this recreation hall for the Armstrong Woods State Park in the early 30s. It was used over the years for meetings and entertainment. And in the year 1952 to and 1953 summer season, a UCLA group of repertory theater players put on plays here. Carol Burnett was among number 4837. Further into the park, the Forest Theater was built. At this time, for the outdoor perform performances, the original seats were of hewn logs with a seating capacity of nearly 2,000. Because of budget and maintenance, the Forest Theater can no longer be used. The last performance was held in 1995. The Recreation Hall was demolished in 1966. Class of 1935 at the Guerneville School. So the whole class played a band instrument and are dressed in their band costumes. And Jack Luttrell has opened his new meat market at where today's Lark Drugstore is. Across the street to the right, you can see that there's still the stables, which are now a garage. 35, the Garibaldi Hotel. It was purchased from the Gadotti family by Zeffirino and Pia Bucignani, and the name changed to Buck's Ranch. This building burned in 1959, and the new building is standing in 1966, and still known in Bucks, at the northwest corner of 4th and Mill Street. Number 1827. Looking north from the town end of the bridge, Tunstall's livery stable and garage became the Shell Oil Station. That's to the right. This building was torn down in 1939. Farther up Armstrong Woods Road, a signal oil station and a garage have been built on the corner of 3rd Street. It is an auto repair shop and still operates there. 1934, this is the kind of fishing that went on in the Russian River. From left to right, Jack Long, Warren, Ro Warren Lark, Gertrude Lark, and Ras Jensen. 9-4 shows the 1937 Sebastopol and Guerneville Rotary Clubs getting together in front of the Sebastopol, the old Sebastopol Chamber of Office building. The Guerneville group are the ones with the cowboy hats. In West, this is where the old train station was, the 1912 station, and it was then turned into a bus depot and the first office of the Russian River Realty. At this point, it looks like a docking station in the 1940 flood. Number 13075. On April 27, 1940, Pats had their opening. Flood didn't stop them. 1942. A group of the local businessmen get together as the guests of Jack Luttrell at the Bar Old Jack. It was his uh, annual dinner given at his ranch at the top of Armstrong Woods Redwood Grove. This picture is number 7808. After the war, World War II, this shows the Hacienda Bridge on the Russian River. The trains were gone and new roads were built along the Russian River right Railroad right away. In this instance, the railroad bridge was split in two to allow a two-lane roadway. The dignitaries are there to do the presentation. Bob Moyer, the uh, microphone, and Nin Gadadi to the, his right, and then Marsh Wallace to Nin Gadadi's right. Prior to the building of River Road, just after World War II, the road from Rio Nido to Guerneville passed a unique establishment called the Beer Can Tavern, where any individual who drank a bakery-sized fruit can of draft beer had their name, date, and time that it took to drink the brew painted on the can. The cans were then put on shelves that lined the wall of the building. Needless to say, the competition was stiff. To the war, 
looking east down the north side of Main Street. The bank was built in 1922. This is the street on the south side looking east on Main Street. 47. This is the northeast corner of Armstrong Woods Road and Main Street, and it is still the site of the Russian River Realty Company. The house to the right gained its dubious notoriety from an article written by John Schubert for the Historical Society, giving the strong possibility that Oakland Nell ran this as a house of ill repute at about 1905 to 1910. 86. 1949. It's the southeast corner of 4th and Church Street, Robertson's Garage. It was destroyed by fire in March 18, 1983. Jess Robinson was the Justice of the Peace for many years in Guerneville. This is also the site of the old Methodist Church, where the tap of a bell told that the fire was. 7779 shows the River Queen. It was run by Angela Bowles from Gurnwood Park, his Gurnwood Park Tavern, down to the Lower Dam. Unfortunately, in 1950's flood, it was taken out to generate by the sea among the rest of the debris on the beach. For 3627, in 1945, the swimmers, beachgoers, are still coming to the river by the thousands. This is the Rianita Bridge Beach. 4607, downriver about halfway between Rianito and Guerneville, is Roland's Bathing Beach. Wood Park Tavern Beach, down by the Summer Bridge. 811, Jack Luttrell had another grand opening at the new location. The old train depot it was in 1943. Jack is on the left. 47, the new school, Guerneville Elementary School, was built out Armstrong Woods Road, where it's at today's 1995 site. In the early 50s, this was what was going on at the site of the old mill and then Westover Park. It's now a carnival ground. The Safeway moved to this area in 1961, and the second store, which was opened in 1985, stands today. In 1946, the Redwood Ra Rangers Riding and Driving Club gathered together on Main Street off for a ride. You can notice that the, bear, the hills are still recovering from 40 years ago's lumbering operation. January 1950, the Redwood Rangers Riding and Driving Club had their installation of officers at Corey's Tavern.
Stumptown Days began in 1946 as a celebration of the old logging days and the opening of the summer season on the river. There were logging events, as you saw, on the, and uh, a kangaroo court, and everyone was encouraged to dress their parts. Uh, Chamber of Commerce members went dressed in costume to San Francisco and other places to extend invitations to the celebration. And here, President, Chamber of Commerce President Phil Gadotti is presenting a bottle of Corbell champagne to, at that time, Mayor of San Francisco, George Christopher. 1983 program of the Rodeo. In 1965, the Chamber of Commerce sponsored the Rodeo, and in the early 1970s, the Rodeo, Russian River Rodeo Association formed and assumed control of organizing the Stumptown Parade and the Rodeo Parade, which is still being held in 1995. Shows the Russian River Rodeo in 19 the parade in 1967 rendition of Hexagon House. In the late 1940s, just outside the entrance to Armstrong Woods State Park, Hexagon House was built as a showroom and student quarters for the students of Pond Farm. Pond Farm was the idea conceived and developed by Pond Farm property owners Jane and Gordon Herr. Their idea was to have international artists teach their crafts. Some of the artists were Marguerite Wildenhain, the potter, Victor Reese, silversmith, Trudiger Montpre was a weaver. Whereas most of the artists moved on, Marguerite stayed to develop her own classes, and her pond farm pottery is still recognized internationally. The school no longer operated by around 1952 and became as well known as a restaurant and about as known as the Woods. In about 1992, the building was destroyed by fire. This is a copy from a newspaper picture of the interior of Hexagon House and shows the Pon Parm students in the uh, circle. Number 6157. It's Nature's Wonderland Museum. It was another business that was located just outside of the entrance to the Armstrong Woods State Park. And the did not only feature the local wildlife, but it had a fine rock and gem collection. This table setting is a news picture pic uh, pic picture, a uh, newspaper picture that shows every one of the things on the table is a rock, but it's in the shape of food. It's a quiet time looking east down Main Street in about 1962. The Safeway has moved across the street to the location that it has today in 1996. Back down on the river, there's a crowd at the beach, and in the early 60s, Bid Green's boat was still coming from Rionito into Guerneville and back again. 1948 into the mid-70s, the pageant of Fire Mountain was held across the river from Johnson's Beach. It was an idea conceived to coincide with a canoe portage and as a thank you to visitors at the end of the summer. The script told of a pair of lovers from two different warring tribes. They came to ask for a blessing for their wedding. The tribes meet coming down the river in canoes with lighted torches, landing at the village in a setting across the river and it created a very colorful production. The blessing of the pair of lovers is given when, thanks to the well-placed setting of flares, the entire mountain and background appears to burst into flames. This 1955 picture of, of the 1955 flood shows the newest operation at where Larks is today. It was the Bridgeway, West Bridgeway Restaurant. A helicopter appears in the parking lot of the old Safeway during the 1955 flood. 4559, Guerneville at night. PG&E maps tell us that, the comp that their company brought their power into Guerneville in 1924, crossing over the bridge. Earlier supplies of power may even have come from the Quicksilver mine, also from the steam engines. In the late 50s, the Gurnwood Tavern became Ginger's Ranch Show, and the interior shows what a big ballroom there was there.
an example of the summer crowds and parking lot at Johnson's Beach. When the swimmers leave, the fishermen arrive. 812. In the 60s, Hannon's Hay Rides with Saul Benelli handling the four horse team. It gave hay rides and a barbecue from Gernwood Park to Reenito back through town on Ar to Armstrong Woods State Park for $1. Number 4424 shows the ladies getting ready for their Gernville Art and Garden Show. It's still held annually. Number 7825. Members of the U.S. Air Force Ground Observer Corps of the Air Defense Command, Civil Defense and Radar Network on a trip to Hamilton Field. Our area was not screened by radar, and on 3-2-1953, the location was changed from a field on west side of Grand Drive to southeast end of Monterio Bridge. 1960, this corner of Guerneville has seen a barbershop become a bank, Rochdale's General Merchandise Store, Burkhofer, and Belden's, Drake Brothers Meat Market, Sterrett's, and then Luttrell's, Foster's Breezeway Restaurant, and now Lark's. And when this picture was taken, that patrol car is there, but there is no stop sign. 1976, a picture of Charlie Wong's Good Food. This is today's Senior Citizen Center. 1976, Johnson's Beach saw its first jazz festival. And on September 7th and 8th in 1996, they will be celebrating their 20 years of the jazz festival. And 1996 saw the birth of the blues festival in Guerneville. Number 606 and the world famous champagne vaults of Corbell are still a popular visitor's Guerneville Chamber of Commerce and the Russian River Region offices are active in telling how f our forested hills have recovered from logging of 80 years ago, and the beaches and rivers are inviting, and Guerneville invites visitors from all over the world to come and enjoy. The Regional Branch Library of the Sonoma County Library System will be celebrating its 15th anniversary in September of 1996. The pictures you have seen are but a glimpse into this community in its early years, almost a hundred years. But we hope it will encourage you, for those who may have any pictures of this area, to share them with the library. Today's happenings are tomorrow's history. The who, what, when, where, why make pictures more worthwhile, and sometimes the library staff can help you.